Hello guys, in today's tutorial I will be talking about uh, the ways you can use Grasshopper to project any kind of object that you want onto a surface which is not flat. Uh, in this uh, example we're going to play around with trees. So uh, you can see here in the viewport that I have a couple of different uh, type of trees there that are like conceptual style trees. And here on this other example I have those trees which are already set on this on this uh, surface. So as you can see this surface is not flat and uh, in this case we cannot use align command to to align these guys uh, onto the surface. So uh, one slow way that you could do this is pretty much go one by one and set it in the position. But imagine if you have like a lot of these uh, a lot of these um, trees and, and, and if it's a big surface this is going to be time consuming so it's not going to be uh, practical. So the workaround is to use a script in Grasshopper, uh, which is fairly simple, but it can be truly powerful when you want to populate big area and if you have the distribution of the trees already. So uh, for this particular case, all you need to do is uh, position your, tr your trees exactly like you want them. So in this case, I positioned them in this uh, sequence, but of course you can move them around and we can play around uh, with that uh, later on. So this is our result. So how do we how do we do this? So let's go to Grasshopper and let's uh, explore a little bit this definition. It's very short. Uh, it's not uh, uh, complex at all. So I just want to explain you the concept behind it. So here we have the geometry. This is the input geometry. And this is the geometry that you want to project onto our surface here on the top. So we're going to select all of them and we're going to say here, right click, set multiple geometries. And now uh, we have them selected there uh, in the viewport. Uh, the next thing is to, uh, to, do, to, find, to find the bottom point, as you can see here, this point. We need to find it, we need to project that point onto this surface so that we tell Grasshopper, okay, I want you to move this tree from the bottom to the top uh, of that projected point. So that's why here we're using uh, we're using bounding box to create uh, to create uh, this um, a box around our geometry, and then uh, we're going to be using the construct prep so that we can select uh, one individual face. And in this case, we want to select the face on the bottom, and we want to find the middle point on that face, which 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 will tell us okay, this is the middle point of the whole geometry in this example. So I'm gonna here select, I think I selected uh, integer 4 and that was the one that was uh, that was the one on the bottom. So let's see. Yeah, so we, we found this uh, fr uh, from the faces. We use the faces as a list and we said this is the list item, we want number 4. For example, if you change this to let's say number 2, then it will get a different face. But that's not the point we want. We want the point on the bottom. So uh, we're going to still go with uh, with 4. And then we're going to find the midpoint of that rectangle, which, which we'll get by using area component. And then we have the midpoint. And that's our midpoint. Uh, and now what is, what is coming next? So first we need to select, uh, of course, the surface that we want to project these points on. But before that, I'm going to uh, disable these guys so that we go step by step there. So I'm going to select the surface, right click, set one surface. And now you see some uh, some errors and these errors are showing the vector uh, onto which uh, these um, trees will be projected. So let's, we'll come back to that a little bit later. Let me just show you uh, what's coming next. So now we have the surface onto which we want to project it. And uh, we simply want to use the move component, but we want to use it with a given, uh, with a given two point vector. This means that I want uh, to move each particular element from this point to the projected point on the top. And that's why we use this option that it's called uh, project point. And what this does, it, 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 it takes all of these points on the bottom and projects them on the surface on the top. Uh, this means that, for example, if I move this tree, you will see that the point will also move on the top alongside everything else. 
and that's that's what we want and now uh, we simply here give it the, the direction in our case we want to give it the uh, z direction because that's the axis onto which uh, we want to project it and you can see here that we use also negative so we, we use both negative and positive because if this is only positive then if some of these trees are above or uh, above the surface then the projection will not work so that's why you want to have both negative and both positive uh, z values which are going into the, the uh, direction input and of course this is the surface uh, this is a very cool thing you can use it's called relay and this is just used to uh, to organize your definitions better you can see how it's flowing down and if I double click on this it will give me this like a zip thing that I can slide and have better organization of the wires very cool thing so uh, now we have the projected points and now the next thing is to use the vector to use the vector it's called vector two points we need uh, to give uh, the movement command the vector onto which uh, in which direction these will be moved so that's why we use this guy and let me just show you what, what this means this means that uh, I'll just create a line to illustrate this so if I go from center here and if I take this point you will see that I'm gonna get uh, this line and that's the vector this is this is the vector and you can see here here uh, what it does it actually moves it from the bottom point to the top point and that's all it does so let's delete these and this is the vector display that you can use to to illustrate this you can even change the color of this uh, with the swatch uh, if you want to show the vector uh, the vector direction and lastly we get the the moment so as you can see we moved all of these trees on the top and uh, let's let's delete this for now we don't need this anymore and now uh, let let's let's see what will happen if we change some things around so for example if I move this tree above like this you can see that the vector will be moved like this and now if I don't have this negative watch what happens I don't get projected uh, uh, elements on my surface of, from these two guys because they are not uh, they're not included because I don't have the negative force so that's why we need, always need this if you want to include both uh, both uh, projections both below and above uh, and of course if, if you move these guys around the projection will work if you move the if you move these on the bottom uh, all of this will work and uh, that's uh, that's the beauty of it if you uh, if you play around uh, if you move it in any place uh, it will still work and as a result we're going to to bake this and this would be our result now let's take a look and see how this definition can be used in uh, a little bit more practical example all right so what we have here is a conceptual conceptual diagram conceptual model that i'm creating for uh, Rhino for Architects uh, 2.0 program and uh, it's connected to animation uh, with Rhino however in this example I wanted to show you how uh, I used Grasshopper to distribute uh, these trees onto these surfaces so in this particular example let's say that these are like some kind of uh, uh, buildings that are going to have a greenery on the top and instead of putting all of these trees on top of the roofs uh, one by one we created here a definition which will populate this and randomly distribute all of these uh, all of these uh, trees on the on the rooftops so let me just show you what uh, we can we can control here so all we need to do is have the input uh, input trees input uh, data uh, as these four trees and then all of the rest are distributed randomly based on, on certain parameters so here uh, you can see that I have a couple of things that we can change so let's try there this is the edge offset so the edge offset is currently 1.5 so let's see if we put it to 2.2 what will happen you can see that uh, the offset from the edge became uh, bigger so the more we move this uh, the denser the trees will become and the denser they will be populated in the middle like this so yeah that's 
that that's what edge offset does in this case and then we have the density for the small surface so this means that if we change this number from eight to let's say let's say three this means that we will have only th uh, three trees on these smaller surfaces so we can control the number of the amount of trees that we want to have populated on the smaller surfaces and then uh, this bigger this this bigger slider is for the bigger surface which means it has 15 so for example if you want to have it less dense you can see i want 12 trees on this one and then it will uh, give you 12 trees so let's let's bring this back let's put this to seven maybe this to let's say 18 for example and let's see what else we can do another parameter we can change is the position of the trees so this is uh and also the tree dis distribution uh so what does this mean this means that if i change this to something else you can see that the trees will uh have totally random positions so the points on the trees will will randomize in each and every uh, surface and if you just change this uh, random tree distribution it will uh, the trees are, are going to stay in the in the position but they will change uh, the type you can see how they're changing only the type so let's say 50 and you can see that uh, they are in the same position but they're changing how uh, they are distributed because we have four of these combinations and uh, moving on we have the random tree rotation and this is pretty much uh, the rotation of that we give so that each tree is rotated randomly if we change this number you can see that now the trees will start rotating and the, the last one is the scaling so if you change this from 30 to let's say 25 then you will see that the scale of the trees will uh, change randomly and that's the parameters uh, that uh, you can use and play around in this particular example if you join my patreon page you will get access to this definition and you can check it out and play it around and you can even ask me questions about it if there's something that you don't understand i would like to give a special thanks to all of you guys who are supporting me on patreon and especially people who joined uh, this week so peter franny latney Ilya. Nikolai and Max, thank you a lot. That would be all for today. Please like and share this video if you found it useful. And let me know in the comments below what you think about it. And I'll see you in the next one very soon.